Hey everyone, Drybread here. Pokemon Fire Red with only one Diglett was a very start and stop run. Let's follow that up with a chaotic and creative one. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Gold with a team of only Smeargle. First of all, you heard that right, a team of Smeargle. Multiple Pokemon. Dude, this is gonna be a fun one. I'm actually pretty pumped. I'm sure you can see part of why we're gonna need a team right now with those unbelievably horrible stats. Less than half of the base attack of a Pidgey. But the level of moves are where you start seeing the real fun. The only move we learn is Sketch, a move that lets us permanently copy a move from our opponent. It copies whatever they used last. That means that Smeargle could learn any move, as long as we can find someone who uses it. That means that for this run, I'll have to study up on what trainers have what moves, and try and find a winning formula through that. This should be a pretty crazy one. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I can win for sure, although I think that the early game is going to be brutal. As for Red though, I'm going to need some pretty great moves if I want to win that one. Oh man, our stats are going to drag us down by that point. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Smeargles. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Totodile with Smeargle so that we can do the whole run with it. I name her Justine. I decided that since I don't know how many Smeargle I'm actually going to need in this run, I should just name them after you guys who I see on Twitter all the time. Speaking of, follow me on Twitter, link in the description. I actually had a video get released early recently on Twitter, so uh, maybe I'll do that more often. I don't know, just to thank you for following me. So, right away we have slim pickings for our first move to copy. We really can't find anything better than Tackle, and I'll need something to make progress, so I bite the bullet and learn it. Hey, at least it's normal type, right? So I go to learn it, and realize I can't. Sketch copies whatever the last move they used was, but we're faster than everything here, and Sketch only has one power point. So we can't actually use Sketch until we find something that we're slower than, or until we hit level 11 and learn a second Sketch, I guess. So I just end up having to grind a bit with Struggle. You saw how horrible Smeargle's base stats were from the start of the game, right? We are pretty frail to be using Struggle, but it's what we have to do. Alright, it's flying gym time. So we have no real choice but to just use Struggle to get through this. There are a few berries at the start of the game, so I decided to hold one so that we could last a little longer in the fight, but it's still pretty close. We lose, but we don't lose by much. Bellsprout Tower is pretty easy though, so I'll pick up a couple levels over there. Once we come back a few levels higher, we have a much better time. We actually still lost this a few times because of crits. This early in the game, they don't crit us very hard, but this is an incredibly close fight in general. Any misses or crits matters a lot here. Once we tried this a few times though, we got the win. After the flying gym, I managed to track down Radita. Sorry, it feels so wrong saying it that way. Uh, just south of town, it had quick attack, finally giving us our chance to get a move. This is better than tackle anyway, so I'm just happy that we got it. I feel a thousand times stronger than using Struggle. I mean, a thousand times stronger than Pathetic still isn't great, as we have to grind just to be able to beat a hiker in Union Cave, but hey, this is progress. Before we leave, we grind up to level 21 so we could finally learn another sketch. It's important because the Fire Breather at the end of this cave has a Vulpix, letting us get Ember right before the Bug Gym. Thanks to having Ember, and getting very lucky on a first try burn on Scyther, Bugsy ended up being pretty easy to deal with. Now next up is our rival. I was actually pretty worried about this because I knew we'd be doing so little damage, but on the very first try, his Ghastly and Zubat ended up doing almost nothing thanks to spamming low accuracy effect moves. Bayleaf didn't take much damage, but thanks to Ember being super effective and a pretty nice burn, we actually got through pretty easily. Oh, did you notice we dropped a level, by the way? <laughs> it's because I'm an idiot and forgot to save after the bug gym at the end of a play session. I left this in because it's literally the first time I've ever made this mistake in, what, two years of doing these challenges? I'll just go off screen the bug gym again real quick. So, next up is the normal gym, but man, we are crazy weak. Would you look at how little damage we're doing to Clefairy? We managed to get Miltank down to about half health, but she has Milk Drink, so she'd have plenty of chances to save herself anyway. 
that's fine. There's a lot of trainers around here, so it won't take long to hit level 31 so that we can learn a new move. At level 31, I tried over and over, getting stopped by Miltank every time. I came into the fight with Sketch ready to go, thinking I'd get a chance to copy Milk Drink so that I could win the next try with that, but she never ended up using it once. By the time we actually won, it was thanks to a burn. Well, we can still get Milk Drink later if we really need to. So after hunting through every available route, my friend researcher Leela and I couldn't find anything stronger than Confusion that would be super effective in the Ghost Gym. We can learn it off a bunch of different trainers, but I ended up getting it off of one of the Kimono Girls. It's not great, but Justine only has to make it through the Ghost Gym, then we can finally catch more Smeargle. Alright, time for the Ghost Gym. I actually thought this one would be much harder, but between them not being able to use Shadow Ball and Hypnosis missing each time, we actually breeze through on the first try without taking a hit. That means we can finally go catch some Smeargle. So the Fog Badge from the Ghost Gym makes it so that we can use Surf outside of battle. Because of that, we can now use an HM Pokemon to surf across some water inside of Union Cave. That gets us to this little hidden patch of grass in the back of the Ruins of Elf, and this is the only patch of grass in the game where we can catch Smeargle, so I stock up. These things only have a 10% encounter rate, by the way, so this takes a while. Also, because they have Sketch and we don't want them to accidentally learn the moves we already have, we have to start the fight by throwing a Pokeball. They only start with one Sketch with one Power Point, so the moment they fail it, they start using Struggle. The catch rate on these things is pretty horrible, though. Seriously, they make themselves faint half the time. It's really brutal. Many Great Balls later, and I've caught quite a few. I went ahead and named all of them after people who I see in the replies of my tweets, so thank you for that. We've got Dreen, Retra, Yagamoth, Unelysian, Alexis, Joshua Finn, Matt, and Greenclonk. I believe Dreen, Yagamoth, and Unelysian all stream, by the way, in case you want to go look them up. Sorry if I pronounced anyone's name wrong, it's part of MDB canon that I never learned how to read. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use all of these Smeargle in the run, or if I'm even going to need them all, but I wanted to at least show all of them to you, just in case your name made it in. Thanks for putting up with all my Twitter stuff. I have a fun time with you guys over there. Right away, I make sure to pick up some new moves. First, I look for a man tie-in so that Dream could pick a Bubble Beam. I actually remember this from my No New Moves run that I did in Gold way back in the day. This is one of the better water moves you can find in the wild right now. Next, I go to the Steel Gym. Not to actually beat it though, we're just interested in picking up Thunderbolt on Justine. Thanks to that, we're able to go to the Fighting Gym and beat it after Polyrath decided to take aim rather than <laughs> attacking. It seems silly, but we probably would have lost this without Thunderbolt. Now, Gen 2 is loaded with some pretty lame moves, so there actually isn't much that I can find right now that I'm very interested in. I do know that I'll need some good ice moves for the Dragon Gym, though. I can't get Ice Beam anywhere that I can find, but I can get Blizzard off price, so I just go ahead and get the Rocket Hideout out of the way so that we can get to him. Blizzard does hit really hard, though, and most of our new Smeargle are still at a pretty low level, even with the experience share. Knowing that they wouldn't actually survive getting hit by Blizzard to be able to sketch it, I instead just leveled up Justine a few more times, replaced Quick Attack with another sketch, then go to the Ice Gym. Price started with a Seal and Dugong, but both went down pretty quickly. We actually almost took out Pelliswine before he could use Blizzard thanks to a crit, but after he healed up, he missed Blizzard, we sketched it, then we finished him off. Justine has more special attack than attack anyway, so I'm happy with putting Blizzard on her. After that, I go ahead and take on the Steel Gym proper. It took a few tries because we need a bit of luck with Iron Tail missing, but thanks to a crit, we actually had a pretty easy time. Next up is the Radio Tower Takeover. We really don't care about any moves here outside of what our rival has, though. Believe it or not, I don't really need Sludge and Smog. That's most of what they seem to use here. First, we pick up Wing Attack off our rival's Golbat so that we finally have a flying move. Naturally, we're going to fail this fight because of Paralysis, but I don't mind. The first attempt is just to get Wing Attack anyway. On the first attempt where we didn't get paralyzed, we made it through the whole fight pretty easily with Justine. I really didn't think that one Smeargle was going to get us this far. I'm kind of dreading grinding up the other ones, though. They're in the fast experience gain category, but it's still not that fast. I mean, how fast can it be when you can't even one-shot most of the wild Pokémon you grind on? Next is the Dragon Gem, and this was a chaotic one. 
The first two Dragonairs went down to Blizzard, but knowing that the third one had Ice Beam, I switched to Yagamoth to sketch it, just to accidentally end up getting Thunder Wave. Well, that's not bad, I actually wanted that move too, so I paralyzed him and switched to Retra to keep trying to learn it. It took a while, and we did get paralyzed, but eventually we managed to sketch Ice Beam. Retro went down, but Justine was able to easily finish it. Last was Kingdra, and I was worried because of all of the smoke screens ruining our accuracy. I was going to switch to another Smeargle to get rid of the accuracy loss, when I realized I only have HM Pokemon left. I'm not allowed to switch to them. I took the chance with Thunderbolt and actually ended up hitting enough to win! Not only was that a first try, but we learned a couple of solid moves. Finally, we have the last rival fight. Sneasel's first, but a couple of embers take it down before it does any real damage. Golbat also went down after only landing a weak hit, so it's a strong start. As Magneton comes out, things get harder. We took him down, but not before getting paralyzed and dropped to half health. Hunter drops his health instantly with Curse, and we could have taken him out with Confusion if not for being fully paralyzed. We took him out on the next turn, but we have to switch out to Yegamoth to get rid of the Curse. We used him to paralyze Kadabra. Unfortunately, he can't do damage because he just has that in Sketch, and I really don't want to steal Future Sight, and that's all he's spamming. So I just wait until he makes us faint. Justine manages to get a two-shot, although we did lose one turn to Paralysis. So as we send out Retra from Meganium, he takes a Future Sight worth of damage. Ice Beam didn't do much damage, but we ended up getting a much-needed freeze, letting Retro take him down, winning us the last rifle fight. That was a lot closer than this fight usually is. With the Elite Four as the next step, let's take a look at our team. It's not super high-leveled. We don't know many moves, and most of our moves aren't that great. Smeargle's in the fast leveling group, so we can raise them reasonably fast, but it's hard to actually find good moves, and the stats are just horrible. Well, for once, we're actually going into the Elite Four completely underprepared. Why? Because we're going to learn some moves off them, of course. We don't have to get all of them right away, since we can refight the Elite Four if we really want to, but I'll need some of them just to get to Lance. First is Will, the Psychic Trainer. I made sure to get a couple more levels on Justine so that we could replace Confusion with Sketch, then use that to copy Psychic. This will be a must-have for Bruno. After that was the first real attempt at this fight. The first Zatu nearly got one-shot by Thunderbolt, but we only took 40 damage from Psychic. Jinx is second, and this beast puts us to sleep and ruins us on most attempts. We do a bit of damage with Thunderbolt, and she does a ton of damage back. Thankfully, on this run, she ended up missing a lovely kiss, letting us take her down. For Executor, we just went with Blizzard, just to miss as he used Reflect. The second one hit for a one-shot. Naturally, we kept Justine out to Thunderbolt Slowbro. I thought this would be harder, but a crit took him down right away. Last was one final Zatu, who took us down to pretty low health with Psychic, but our Thunderbolts were just too strong, getting us the victory. Next up is the Poison Trainer Koga. It starts pretty well with his first three Pokemon all going down easily, when I decided to start switching into the rest of the team to learn Toxic. Unfortunately, because he could one-shot our weaker Smeargle with Sludge Bomb, he just used that instead. That's alright, we can always come back and learn it later. His whole team is weak to either Psychic or Ember, so it's a super easy first try with Justine. Future MDB here, by the way. I literally can't find any of the footage for this battle. Uh, I, I don't know if I forgot to record it, I don't know if the footage died, I don't know if I accidentally deleted it thinking it was one of the failed runs that aren't worth keeping. I have no idea, so here's a picture of my cats. The white one's Sabu, named after Sabu, you know, the, the wrestler. Rocky is the orange one, we didn't name him. They're absolutely wonderful cats, you can find all kinds of pictures of them on my Instagram. How did I manage to turn losing my footage into an Instagram plug? Uh. <laughs> After that is Fighting Trainer Bruno, and this had me rightfully worried. Psychic was enough to get us through Hitmon top thanks to him just using Dig, but Hitmon Lee did some serious damage with Double Kick. By the time we got to Hitmon Chan, he quickly took us down with a couple hits of Mock Punch, a fighting type quick attack. We're not going to go home empty handed though, as I had Retro Sketch Mock Punch on the way down. This could be good for Karen, the Dark Trainer. While I was grinding up some of the lower-leveled Smeargle, I was doing some research on the side trying to figure out a better move to handle Bruno with, but I just couldn't find anything. There aren't many wild Pokémon around here with good moves to sketch, at least nothing better than Psychic. That was super easy to pick up off Will, since he uses it all the time. That's when I had a genius thought. One that I probably should have had a long time ago. I just went and got a couple of my other Smeargles to learn Psychic off Will. 
I mean, we have tons of move slots and we learn sketch every 10 levels anyway. I'm hardly even using the other Smeargles. What's the harm in a bunch of them knowing Psychic? It's probably the most reliable move we could teach them right now anyway, weirdly enough. So now we need at least three good Smeargle, but I'd like more. We have some in the low level 40s, but they hit for so little damage that they aren't even great at grinding. Smeargle are in the fast leveling category, but when they take multiple attacks just to beat any enemy, it's hard to call that fast. I actually ended up spending a great deal of this grind in the ruins of Alf, believe it or not. The experience here is horrible, as you'd expect, but after doing some research online, it seemed like it was one of the more reliable places to catch up the newer Smeargle on stat experience. Pretty much what effort values were before Generation 3. It would take me forever to explain how stat experience works, and honestly, I hardly understand it myself. Just know that every 500 or so unknown that we take out, we'll max out at least the attack and special values, I think? That's what we care about the most anyway, since, my god, it's slow. It takes more like 800 unknown if you want to max out the rest of the stat values. I decided to do 5 trips to the ruins with each Smeargle in the party, other than Justine, who probably already maxed out her stat experience a long time ago. That's about 30 unknown a trip per Smeargle, so roughly 150 unknown per Smeargle taken out. Not even close to max stats, but we'll see how much this helps. Normally this wouldn't be worth it, but our Smeargle can't one-shot anything of value reliably, so this is the next best thing. Normally I don't have time to do stuff like this anymore, but now that I don't do daily videos, I have a bit more time. <laughs> well, a bit. At the time I'm doing this challenge, it's been a crazy busy few weeks between dental surgery for my cats, lots of work going longer than expected, and all kinds of stuff in my personal life that requires time to fix. You know it's been a busy month when I've had to be on and off the phone with technical support people from multiple different companies. Look, if you're a kid and you're hearing this part, this probably sounds like the most boring, stupid thing ever. But if you're an adult listening to this right now, it's like the most relatable thing you've heard in your life. Anyway, I'm rambling. What I'm trying to get at is that I'm going through a bit of a rough time right now in terms of workload, but the bills have to get paid, so I'm not slowing down. I could go the route of sponsorships, and maybe I will if something comes along that I really enjoy, but I'd kind of rather just put in an extra day of work and give you guys a challenge that you guys request constantly, like this one. I would have never paid off my debt right before the pandemic hit without the support of all of you watching and I don't forget easily. As long as the hours are, you guys let me make a living and support my family by doing what I would have done anyway playing Pokemon a lot, and editing videos. So if you guys want to see me make some dumb long Smeargle challenge, then heck yeah I'll do some dumb long Smeargle challenge. Thanks for putting up with how busy I've been the last few months. Now let's go check out the team. So after tons of unknown and quite a bit of grinding in an area that actually had decent experience, here's our team and our moves. Some of these moves I got just so that I'll have something, like Slash. Some of these we got by accident, like Fire, Spin, and Rage, and some of these we got just because, who knows, maybe it's good, like Hidden Power. Our stats are still completely horrible because I only fought maybe 150 unknown per Pokemon, and Smeargle's base stats are horrible in the first place, but hey, <laughs> it's progress. It is definitively progress. Let's make our final guesses on whether we can win this or not. Let's do this. Okay, so back at Bruno, things go pretty much the same way until Hitmonchan, who I send in Dream to Confuse. We went for Psychic, but Mock Punch took us out, so it's out to Retra to give Wing Attack a try. It actually worked out pretty well, taking him down with about half of our health left. Machamp is next, so I sent in Yagamoth to paralyze him. He ended up missing a cross chop that surely would have one-shot us, but our Psychics were doing next to nothing. We got lucky, and he missed again before taking us down. At least we got a special defense drop in on him. Thanks to that, I was able to switch out to Justine to finish him off with Psychic. Last was Onyx, and we could have one shot him with Blizzard, but we missed twice in a row and got taken down by a crit. After switching to Retra, he was able to one shot Onyx from full health with Ice Beam. Finally, some progress again! After that is Dark Trainer Karen. Right away, we paralyze Umbreon, then get hit by Sand Attack, so we switch out to Retra. We get confused in the process though and end up hitting ourselves a bit. Mog Punch was doing just about no damage, but neither was Umbreon with Faint Attack. We traded shots for ages before winning thanks to Paralysis. For Vileplume, we went for Blizzard just to miss and get hit by Petal Dance. 
The second one hit, leaving Vileplume with a sliver. Ember ended up finishing it off right after, but we're still a bit beaten up. Gengar is next, but we ended up one-shotting it with a critical psychic, and Murkrow went down in a single thunderbolt. Last was Houndoom, so I switched to Alexis so that we could go for Magnitude. I picked it up in Victory Road earlier, just to get almost taken out by Flamethrower while dealing almost no damage. <laughs> yeah, she went down. Failing that, I paralyzed him with Yegamoth. I then tried to use Psychic on the Dark types, because I wasn't thinking, but Paralyze saved us and let us get a couple of slashes in. I switched it to Justine, and Karen used a Max Potion, so I just hit Thunderbolt a few times for the knockout. Finally, the Pokémon Champion. First is Water Onyx, who goes down in one Thunderbolt, as I'm sure you'd expect. His second and third Pokémon are Dragonites, who go down in one shot to Blizzard. This is the fight I had in mind when I got that move in the first place. It's double super effective against three of his Pokémon. Aerodactyl's out fourth, and although it goes down in two Thunderbolts, his Hyper Beam finally did some damage to us. Fifth is Charizard, so I stay out to hit a big Thunderbolt for massive damage. Then we took a Flamethrower to drop to yellow. A second Thunderbolt took him down. Last was his final Dragonite, so for safety, I switched out to Yagamoth to paralyze him. He outsped us and hit Hyper Beam, though, taking us out before we could hit him, so it's back out to Justine. It's a good thing that he has to recharge from Hyper Beam, though, because we ended up missing our first Blizzard. The second one hit, landing a one-shot, and finishing the fight. With the Pokémon Champion down, we get our gang of Smeargle into the Hall of Fame, but this is a Gen 2 run, so you know it's not done yet. Now, normally in Gen 2 runs, we just breeze through Kanto, since the Gym Leaders are really easy until Blue. And they are still easy, but because we actually learned some moves off the Gym Leaders, I have something to show you! With Blaine, we had this hilarious exchange where I had to keep switching my Pokémon in and out for ages, so that I wouldn't make his Meg Cargo faint Well, I was trying to wait for him to use Flamethrower on Justine so we could finally get a better fire move. This actually took two tries because he kept using Flamethrower on everyone but Justine. Next on Erica, I made sure to pick up Leech Seed. I think this is going to be a must-have for dealing with Red Snorlax at the end of the game. At Jasmine's Poison Gym, we finally picked up Toxic. I've been wanting that one for a while now. It's kind of a last resort move. We're fragile, so I really don't want to have to outlast anything, but it's worth a try if it comes down to it. And last, I pick up Surf off Misty. I think those are all the moves that we care about from these gym leaders. Let's grind up the team so that each Smeargle's at least level 60, then take our first shot at blue. First is Pidgeot, so we Thunderbolt right away. We actually get hit by one too thanks to Mirror Move, but it does so little damage that we almost healed back up thanks to our new leftovers we're holding. After he went down, we switched to Yegamoth for Alakazam. We have no great answers for him, so we paralyzed him, but he ended up using Reflect. Slash will bypass it on crit, so I go for that, but we didn't end up critting a single time with Yegamoth before going down. I sent out Joshua Finn to slash some more, getting us the knockout as Reflect faded. For Rhydon, we sent out Dreen and did big damage with Bubble Beam, before he started a sand attack and then switched out to Water Onyx. Weird move. Okay, well, I confused Water Onyx into hitting himself, then Leech Seeded it, not wanting to switch and risk Justine taking a big hit. Well, we went down to Hyper Beam, so we got the free switch, and then Justine Thunderbolted it down. Rhydon came back out and quickly went down to Psychic, and next is Executor, who took big damage off Flamethrower. He just charged up for Solar Beam, so we easily two-shot him. Last was Arcanine, and this was tense. We started trading flamethrowers and thunderbolts back and forth, with me hoping to either outdamage him or to paralyze him. And I mean, we would have won if not for Blue using full restore. We went down, so I tried switching out to Joshua, but he ended up getting taken down by extreme speed. I tried using Alexis to spam magnitude, but not only did it not do much, but he used another full restore to hang on. It wasn't too long before we have to send out Retra and he goes down in two hits as well. Maybe if I hit Toxic on RK9 earlier we could have won, but then again he had so many full restores that I doubt I could get it to stick. Let's come back a few levels higher. Grinding has really slowed down at this point. We don't get much experience by fighting Pokémon that are this low of a level, and yet we still often don't one-shot them unless we're using super effective moves. I feel like I'm torn between two strategies. Either we can grind her up a bunch and use her as the spearhead, with the rest of the team being there to tag out for specific problems, or I can spend that time grinding the whole team so that no one's useless, but no one's great. Considering just how weak Smeargle is, I think I'm gonna have to do a bit of both. 
We need one Smeargle to be ahead of the pack to deal the damage, but the other ones can't be such a low level that they get two shot every time. If they can at least handle two hits without going down from a gym leader's Pokémon, then maybe they can get something done. Alright, we're back at the blue fight. This time Pidgeot was a one-shot from a crit. Cool, but it wasn't gonna hurt us much anyway. This time for Alakazam, I went straight for Retra and hit Toxic. We went down without dealing any direct damage though, so I'm not sure if this actually worked out any better. I traded out to Justine and was able to power him down, but he did hit both Psychic and Reflect. Thanks to the special defense drop we took, I made sure to switch to Yagamoth. This is so that we can get rid of the stat loss, and also to two-shot him quickly with Surf. Like last time, he started another Sandstorm on the way. For Water Onyx, we got a quick one-shot with Thunderbolt, and Executor went down after a couple of flamethrowers like last time. It's time for RK9 again. Right away this time, we ended up paralyzing with Yagamoth. He has full restores though, so this might not stick. We ended up going down fast to Flamethrower and Extreme Speed. Drain is next, so we landed Leech Seed, but we got one shot with a crit before we could get our Confuse Ray in. That's when Alexis finally has her big moment. We switch out to her and started spamming Sand Attack to drop his accuracy, and using Healing from the Leech Seed and Moonlight to stay up. RK9 has Swift, so he can still hit if he wants to, but it doesn't do much. There are many times in this exchange where we almost fainted. Just to hold on, thanks to either Sand Attack making a miss, or Leech Seed healing us just enough to hang on from a hit. Eventually, we started using Magnitude, and although it did some decent damage sometimes, we did faint in the end. All we have left is injured Justine and healthy Joshua Finn, so we go for Josh just for him to end up using another full restore. In the end though, thanks to all of his misses, we were able to whittle him down with Slash, winning the fight. With that done, all that's left is red, but here's a look at his team. His lowest level Pokémon is an Espeon, who could probably one-shot our weaker Smeargle. I think it's pretty safe to say that I'm going to need to grind them up quite a bit so that they can actually participate in the fight. All of Red's Pokémon, but his Pikachu, have base stats in the 500s. Our Smeargles have a base stat count of 250, meaning that overall they have more than double the stats we do. No matter how good of moves we get on them, if they outspeed us and one-shot us, then we can't use them. I mean, we can hardly even beat some of the wild Pokémon here, it's crazy. My prediction is that we can't beat this until the average Smeargle is level 80 and Justine is level 100, but I'm willing to try this fight before that point. Also, a funny side effect of this not being a single Pokémon run, I actually don't have space on my team for an HM Pokémon when walking to Red himself, so I have to navigate this garbage on my way through. Gen 2 Darkness is the absolute worst kind. I actually have Bulbapedia up on the side so that I can look at the map. This is what I'm gonna have to do after each time that I have to leave this place to go grind or get new moves for Red. So you can probably understand why I don't exactly want to try this fight every five levels. The trip sucks, but hey, it's still better than having to ditch a smear goal for Flash. It's finally time for our first attempt at Red. I started by having Alexis spam Magnitude, and we got super lucky with Pikachu missing quite a few thunders. But even with that, we fainted because he can just spam full restores. Justine managed to finish it off. Second was Espeon, so I sent out Yegamoth to paralyze him, just to get outsped and nearly one-shot. I knew this would happen. Once he went down, we sent out Dream to hit Confuse Ray and Leech Seed. After that, we switched her out. We still need her Leech Seed for Snorlax, after all. Unfortunately, when we switched to Finn to take the hit, he just ended up getting one-shot. For the rest of the Espeon fight, I just tried to brute force it with Justine. Next is the dreaded Snorlax, so right away we have Dream hit Leech Seed. Now keep in mind, Leech Seed only kicks in at the end of the round if nothing fainted, so this doesn't hurt him on turns where he makes us faint. And man, does he ever make us faint a lot. Even against Justine, we were taking massive damage off Body Slam. We could try Toxic, but he'll probably just use Rest to get rid of it. We throw our whole team at him, but hardly deal any damage. It really does look like we need to grind more. Alright, we all know I don't have infinite time. But while I'm grinding, I've been looking back at the script for this video that I've been writing as I go. This is the longest one I've written in a long time. I actually have a lot to say without just repeating myself. This is a brutal challenge, but it's also probably one of the most interesting ones to read back. It's kind of funny, I ended up working through my previous day off just to keep working on this challenge, and here I am working on my day off again because I'm just terrible at this whole relaxing thing. But I don't regret it. 
Some challenges can make you want to pull your hair out while you're playing it, but when you look back on it in the future, it's just kind of fond memories. The Magikarp and Wobbuffet challenges are both like that for me. Some of the earliest ones I've made, but also some of the ones that I'm most proud of just because of what I was able to overcome. But I never did win that Wobbuffet challenge. It's funny. I thought at the time that people would be really disappointed, but it really didn't seem like anyone was, and I think that's part of why I don't feel worried right now. If I get to the end of today and I still haven't beaten Red, I don't really think anyone will be mad. And you know what? That's rare on YouTube. I'm grateful that I ended up with a seriously supportive and wholesome community, because anybody would have gotten burnt out at this point without support. Thank you again everybody so much for sticking through what is no doubt a crazy long video. But would you look at that, level 100. Man, only 120 special attack? Well, it'll have to do. Let's go take on Red. Pikachu was still pretty easy on this run thanks to him just using Charm. Normally that's a huge issue in single Pokemon runs, but in this it didn't do anything since Justine doesn't use her attack stat. Espeon was next, so I started with Thunderbolts right away. We took a lot of damage while trading shots, going all the way down to yellow health, but we managed to take him down. Next is the terrifying Snorlax, so it's straight to Dream for Leech Seed. The first one missed though, so he got to use Amnesia. That's scary. The second Leech Seed hit, although we took massive damage from Body Slam. Next we hit Confuse Ray, and then start laying in hits as long as we could. We held on for ages thanks to Leech Seed healing us and Snorlax hitting himself in confusion. Weirdly enough, when he got the chance to finally heal with rest, he instead body slammed Dream down. Thanks to that, Retro was able to come in and hit Slash to actually take out Snorlax pretty easily. Next was Venusaur, so we sent Justine back out with Blizzard. It doesn't get the one shot, but he just charged for Solar Beam anyway, so we easily finished it with Flamethrower. Fifth is Charizard, so we Thunderbolt it right away for big damage. We took a Flamethrower in return to go all the way to red health, just to go back to yellow from leftovers, and score the knockout with Thunderbolt. Last is Blastoise, so for safety, it's out to Yegamoth to paralyze him. Then I just started using Slash and Psychic for damage. We got super lucky with him being fully paralyzed four different times, but eventually, he managed to make it rain and hit Surf. Shockingly enough though, we actually held on with red health, giving Yagamoth the opportunity to finally take him down, beating the secret final boss of the game. This was easily one of the most unorthodox challenges I have done in a long while, but it was pretty cool. If we can figure out a way to get a team of Smeargle in other Pokemon games, then I wouldn't mind trying this challenge in those ones too, as long as you guys are interested. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that or not. I hope you guys like that run. For next Saturday's Pokemon Challenge, I'm going to be doing another weird one with Pokemon Red with only HMs. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you want to see more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. Also, check out the playlist in the description if you want to watch all the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you guys want to see more Pokemon stuff from me, my friend Wadageek and I have done randomizer playthroughs of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Black and White, Red and Blue, and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire over on his channel, linked in the description. You can also watch myself, Wadageek, and Goosehead playing Pokemon here on my channel. We've done Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon X, and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. Also come to my Twitch TV streams and tell me that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time... Have a nice day.